So the background here for folks who might not know is that during COVID in April and May of 2020, when people were prohibited from dining inside, the city enabled restaurants to put tables out in the street. And that was a emergency measure that really saved a lot of small businesses from closing when restaurants, when they really couldn't serve inside, they were legally prohibited from serving inside. It wasn't safe. So they put out these um, outdoor setups and that spring and summer, they became popular with a lot of people. And even when the indoor was permitted, they've been allowed to keep that. Um, this emergency program was extended. And uh, there's a flip side to that though. And that is that it's presented issues, particularly in areas where there's a high concentration of these outdoor setups. And people have built these sheds I don't know if we want to call them sheds, but that's what they are, these structures. Many of them were, you know, are like almost entirely enclosed. Some of them are very pretty. Some of them are not so pretty. Some of them are actually like abandoned. And, you know, some people like them, some people don't like them. The decision um, was made like a year and a half ago to create a permanent program to extend outdoor dining beyond this crisis. But the details of that were left up to the future, right? They were left up to really the future city council. So one of the first things that has been put in our lap is figuring out what does this future outdoor dining program look like. And whenever you talk about the public sphere, public space, space that belongs to everyone in New York and how we should use it, it's one of the most controversial things that could be discussed in New York. In a city of 8.5 million people, getting people to agree on what we should use our public land for, whether that be a, a lot, that's why you have these big fights between parks and, and affordable housing sometimes. What's that lot gonna look like, that publicly owned lot? Or in this case, the, the streets, right? What should we, should they be parking spaces? Should be, they be outdoor dining? Should they be gardens? Should they be playgrounds? What, or should they just be empty curb to allow for curb access? So the job of a legislature is very, it's, it's a tough job to kind of craft something that works best, really craft a compromise. And what I want to do is come up with, is help come up with something that works for all neighborhoods. And there's a lot of neighborhoods in the city that haven't had outdoor dining before which I, by the way, I didn't even realize how little outdoor dining there was pre-pandemic. We have a fair amount in our district, but some parts of the city had almost none before. So a new system is being put into place to allow for the outer boroughs to get all this additional outdoor dining. The problem is for a neighborhood like ours, particularly you know, down the village where you have a very high concentration of resident of restaurants, there's been some areas where the current system just ain't working. Like down on Sullivan and Thompson and McDougal, you've got just like one long shed going the whole length of the block and you can't see the, the storefronts, you can't access the curb in many places. And there's been a real enforcement problem. The city has not been enforcing. They laid out all these rules for the restaurants, but they haven't been enforcing the rules. And I, I think they're taking the same approach that I mentioned before with the fines and the, and the fees. They're really giving, they're only giving warnings, really. And 
which in, in you know that might work in some instances but what it's also done is it's undermined the confidence of a lot of people that the city's ever going to really enforce any rules so yeah you say that you're going to have the outdoor dining end at a certain hour why should we believe that the city is going to enforce that they haven't been enforcing it the last two years so that's what we're up against i really think um that we need to come up with something sensible that keeps the best parts of outdoor dining and really addresses some of the big problems with it it's going to be controversial i'm working closely with community members with my colleagues in the city council i'm hoping to have a lot of i'm hoping to have the opportunity to be part of the negotiations and I'm, I'm working closely with council member chris marte and 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 gil brewer we're going to be insisting on really being part of these negotiations because generally historically you'd have the the bill sponsor and the speaker's office would really do the negotiations with the mayor's administration and then just kind of let everyone else know where they ended up we don't want that to work this way because we our districts have the most the most outdoor dining so we really want to be involved and i believe we will be involved i believe that uh they are going to listen uh that's what's going to happen in the coming weeks regarding this issue so this this particular issue um was you know a saving grace for a lot of Sorry, saving grace for a lot of the businesses that um, the hospitality industry. Are there programs that are being discussed that will help other businesses that are not necessarily in the hospitality industry? There was a program called um, Open Storefronts, which would allow um, non restaurants to put out um, goods in, in the street. And that uh, for one reason or another, that didn't um, take off, and that you know I'd really like to revisit that to see why why not, because retail has really taken a huge huge hit before the pandemic and after, as online shopping becomes more and more part of people's daily lives this upcoming generation of people, of consumers, asking them to go to the store and buy something, asking a 20 year old to go to the store and buy something, unless it's perishable, unless it's a service, that's a, becoming a foreign concept to a lot of people. And that's really hurting retail stores, gift shops, bookstores, hardware stores. So we need to be much more creative in thinking about ways to help non bars and restaurants. Because uh, the other thing is a lot of business, a lot of property owners, they don't want to rent to a, to a restaurant or a bar. There's a property owner on Bleecker Street whose uh, storefront has been empty for a long time. And I asked them, why haven't you rented out that storefront, they said, because I live on the second floor and I don't want a bar in a restaurant. I could rent it to a bar in a restaurant like that. I can't get a tenant that's not a bar in a restaurant. And, you know, a lot of that's because of the, uh, the changing nature of retail. But we also have to provide new financing mechanisms. I support the creation of a New York City a uh, public bank that could be that could be tailored primarily to supporting small business and small businesses and MWBE businesses and um, uh, neighborhoods that have had trouble getting financing. We need to provide uh, legal assistance, recruitment and training, uh, business education. We need to help with all the violations that I talked about before cutting down the violations. And we need to stop jacking up the property taxes every year. The property taxes 
the city of New York has exponentially increased property taxes. This is something I hear from a lot of businesses, and that puts a lot of pressure on